This is Thursday, hey, welcome to December. We are into December. Uh, once again, if you're wanting to turn the computer into a round, because it went all blurry, there we go. Your book report in early is due by next Friday, if not, you have a week and a half. Myth test corrections are now available. You can get the sheet from me and you can do the myth test corrections. Uh, get the points back. And we'll talk about the quiz tomorrow at the end of class. Uh, there, that. Uh, once again, I'll mention the things where I have the connections. If you have your connections, you can mark them, mark them down. Uh, see the front there. Who is our main character in the story talking to us? Jared. Jared. Who is, in the beginning, Jared's best friend? Cheryl. Cheryl. What do people think about Jared and Cheryl? Dating. Are they dating? No. Well, yeah. <laughs> or maybe I'm just messing with you. Um, and then let's see. Ooh, who is Cheryl's brother? Randall. And who does Cheryl hate? Rebecca. 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 What's Rebecca good at doing? Singing. 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 Shirley Temple. Just like little Shirley Temple, and we're not watching that again. Darn it. Uh, <laughs> go YouTube it yourself, and you have a whole evening of that creepiness. Um, <laughs> who is it that Jared hates? Austin. 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 Space. Austin. 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 Space. Or Austin. Pace. And, sorry, hiccups. What is it Austin's good at doing? Running. Running. Everything. Ooh. Bing. Describe Austin's personality. Cocky. Snobby. Cocky works for me. Snobby. Whoa. Snobby would also work. Who does Jared almost get into a fight with? Oh, I Then we did the. I think that's it. We got to the. Oh yeah, they did the voting for the captain. I think we left off when they were in the treehouse. Yeah. Yeah. Who's that captain? Who does the crocodile smile? Austin. Austin. We find out the captain in just a moment. Oh. Treehouse. Treehouse. It's probably gonna be Austin. We are on page 29. Oh yeah, right after I had you mark a little foreshadowing part with the whole somebody up there listening. I'll make sure I keep my eye out for bear traps, I said. So we're halfway down on page 29, that big middle paragraph. She laughed, and I could barely see her now in the shadows on the other side of the treehouse. Like I said, it was small. I could feel her Reeboks touching my Nikes. I wiggled my feet, and she wiggled back, like we were playing woods or something dumb like that. I looked over the edge of the railing. It was clear that night. No fog like the last few nights. Cheryl's house was the last on the street, and from there, you could just barely see the ocean between the trees, a quarter mile away. It was my favorite time of day, when the faint blue glow against the horizon is just enough to make everything look black against it, just after the colors have faded from the sky. Back when we were kids, I always loved talking with Cheryl, even with Randall in the treehouse at this time of day. Ghost stories, or even just stupid talk. Now that we were older and busier, it seemed as though I never really got to talk to Cheryl alone when it was quiet like this. It was different from the old days, but I still liked it. I wiggled my feet again, and she wiggled back. Maybe we shouldn't have done all that before. What? Talk mean about Rebecca and Austin? It's like I feel guilty now. Now that we'd stopped, I began to feel it too. Well, it was your idea. Well, thanks. Now I feel worse. Sorry. Then I gave her her own speech back. It's only words. It's only like sticking your tongue out at them. That's all. Like you said, it's only pretend. We're not hurting anybody. Right. It gets at all our frustrations and stuff, so we don't go around being angry at them all day. Right. Somehow, I still don't think I convinced her. I didn't convince myself, either. I couldn't. Not when my mind was still filled with all those nasty, ridiculous things that could be brought down upon lost in space. What bothered me most was that, like Cheryl said, it was fun. I didn't like feeling that it was fun. I moved closer to Cheryl. Somehow I felt that moving closer to her would make that creepy feeling go away. Do you really hate Austin? Cheryl asked. I couldn't see her talking now. It was too dark. I could just barely make out her shape against the trees behind her. I don't know. Do you really hate Rebecca? Cheryl sighed. And she said, It's not really hate. She's my cousin. I care about her. But sometimes, I think she enjoys making me feel lousy. <laughs> I know Austin does. Do you really hate Austin, Jared? I don't know. I really didn't know. It's just, it's all gotten so confused. 
She thought for a good long time. Would you be happy if Austin Pace moved far away? Yeah. Would you be happy if he got hurt so bad that he couldn't run fast? Foreshadowing, <laughs> foreshadowing. I don't think so. I think I'd feel sorry for him. How about if he died? Cheryl, come on! Okay, sorry, sorry, dumb question. She was silent for a long, long time. She was thinking about something, I could tell. Then she finally spoke, very quietly and slowly. I know what the real question is. The real question to find out whether or not you hate him. What? The question is, if there were a way for you to make it happen, would you wish that Austin Pace had never been born? The cold of the night hit me just then, but I don't think it was just the cold. It was something more, something inside, not out. And it was because I knew the answer to that question. I didn't like the answer at all. Would you? Yeah. Oh, I know how that feels. The breeze played with the dying leaves above us. The chill got stronger. Before, I just felt nasty. Now, I felt weird. Weird and uncomfortable with myself and with that question. Do I wish Lost in Space had never been born? Yeah. Yeah, I wish that. As much as I hated myself for wishing that, deep down, really deep down, I did feel that way. And I couldn't change it. It was scary. Cheryl, I'm spooked out. Me too. It's getting cold. Maybe we should go in? Cheryl went first, and I followed her down. You really do feel that way too, huh? I don't want to talk about that anymore. Let's, let's talk about something nice. But we didn't talk about anything nice. We didn't talk much about anything at all. That good feeling we had when we first climbed into the treehouse was gone. And it wouldn't come back for the rest of the night. We went in, watched ten minutes of TV with her brother, then I hopped on my bike and rode home. I tried to chase that eerie feeling away by burying my head in that first night's homework. It worked, and by morning the feeling was gone. I felt like my old self and went on as if what we had discovered about ourselves in the treehouse that night meant absolutely nothing at all. The ignoring that night? That was a mistake. Not the first one. Yeah, and not the last one, either. Maybe that feeling was meant to be a warning. It should have been a bright red alarm flashing in our eyes. If it was, we were both too stupid to notice it. Chapter, The Fire and the Agony. People were milling around the phys ed bulletin board before classes. Ours wasn't the only team choosing captains that day, and everyone there waited impatiently for each coach to put up the results. I wasn't one of the kids waiting. I mean, sure, I wanted to be captain, but I didn't want to think about it. The more I thought about it, the more worried I would get, and I'd feel miserable until the results went up. It's better to think about anything else until then. I thought about my new teachers, my old friends, what I would have for lunch, anything but the track team and Austin Pace and his million-dollar aeropeds that never got dirty and looked like they came from planet Krypton or someplace like that. I wandered around a bit before the homeroom bell rang, looking for people I hadn't seen the day before. People really do change in one summer. Charlie Garcias had grown like six inches since June. And you know what I mean, and half of everyone I knew seemed to have gotten rid of their braces. I talked to Ralphie Sherman, who said that he made a movie in Hollywood over the summer. <laughs> Ralphie was always good for a laugh, because he never uttered a word of truth in his entire life. Pretty soon I forgot all about the track team and was in a good mood. Such a good mood, I even said hello to Tyson McGaw. He grunted back and then five minutes later got himself into a fight with some kid whose name I don't remember. Watching Tyson get into fights was a school tradition. Personally, I never got into a real fight with him. Like I said before, Tyson fought like an animal and I wanted nothing to do with that. Just looking at him, you could tell that something wasn't quite right. His eyes were kind of far away, like he wasn't seeing you. And his stringy matted hair was just plain ugly. It seemed no amount of combing could help that. Tyson was definitely not a mother's dream. <coughs> Mr. Green saw the fight and ran down the hall. Mr. Green was a vice principal, but doubled as the school guidance counselor, which must have been a tough job since so many kids go wacko during junior high. I highlighted that sentence in my book and just put, yeah, every kid. Uh, one more. Hey, can I get a water? Can I get a water bottle? Sure. Can I get a 
After Mr. Green had broken up the fight, which wasn't much of a fight, it was more like Tyson doing an impersonation of the Tasmanian Devil, everyone in the hall began to applaud and laugh at Tyson as he continued struggling with Green. I have to admit, okay, I did laugh a little too. Like I said, it was a school tradition. Mr. Green held him as he struggled, and then Tyson turned to Green and screamed out a whole lot of words I don't want to repeat, and then started breathing like a bull ready to charge. Do you know what he did? He screamed at Green. What did he do, Tyson? He called me a slime ball! <laughs> I laughed right away. I couldn't help it. It was the way he said it, with all that anger in his voice, long and drawn out. Slime ball! Everyone laughed, but I guess I must have laughed loudest because Tyson broke away from Green and stomped up to me. You think that's funny, huh? He yelled, almost afraid to pull back his fist and hit me. <laughs> uh, you touch me, Tyson, and I swear I'll flatten you. I'll, I'll hang you up by your toenails over a bear trap. That one really sent him for a loop. He looked at me with those weird eyes, trying to figure out how that'd feel. For a split second, I felt bad for him. I mean, here he was, this nutty kid in a frenzy, and everyone was laughing at him. He must have felt terrible. I almost felt like saying, It's okay, Tyson. You're not a slime ball. Just take it easy. Just to make him feel better. But then everyone around me began to laugh even harder, and Tyson stormed off. Green gave me this dirty look that said, Bear trap? Ugh, I'll give you a bear trap. And ran after Tyson. Yeah, school was the same as ever. As the homeroom bell rang, I heard a voice behind me. Jared, I'd like to uh, speak with you for a minute. I recognized the voice right away. I turned to see Coach Schuler. You know that feeling you get when you think something great is going to happen and your heart misses a beat and you get shivers down your spine? Well, that's what I felt just then. Why would Coach Schuler pull me aside to talk to me unless he had good news for me about the captaincy? Hi, Coach, what's up? You got a minute? Yeah, great. Yeah, why don't you come into my office? I followed him down the hall, into the gym, where it was much quieter. Our footsteps echoed in the huge, empty gym as we crossed it. It was cold, and the air had the sour smell of the floor varnish. We went into the gym office. Huh, have, a, have a seat. And he picked up his clipboard and began to look at it. He sat in the other chair behind the desk. I, uh, I told up the results. Yeah, I said, trying to sound like I didn't really care. It was, uh, it was pretty close. Yeah? He looked up from his clipboard. I couldn't really read his expression. He had a poker face, I guess. I mean, you could never tell what was in his head. He stalled, keeping me in suspense. I didn't have a poker face. I knew all the expectations in my eyes. In my lap, I had my fingers crossed so hard, my knuckles were turning white. You, uh, you didn't get it, Jared. I'm sorry. At first, it was like I didn't quite hear him. My fingers were still crossed, as if crossing them could change what he had said. I still held my breath, but then what my ears had heard made its way into my brain. Sorry, hiccups. You know that sinking feeling? The kind you get about ten seconds before you realize that you're going to throw up? Well, I didn't feel like I was going to throw up, but that sinking feeling stayed around for a long time. Before I went into his office, I'd been prepared to lose, but then he called me in. And I was sure that I had won. Why couldn't he have just let me find out when he posted it? I could have handled that. It wouldn't have been so bad. I would have just looked and walked away. But now, he'd gotten my hopes up, and I couldn't just walk away. I had to sit there and feel lousy. Uh, like I said, it was a close race. You and Austin were, were neck and neck all the way. He began to fiddle with his clipboard. If it wasn't his clipboard, it was his whistle. If it wasn't his whistle, it was his glasses. He always fiddled with something. Listen, I, uh, I know how much you want to be captain. And because of all your hard work, I'm going to make you a very special offer. As runner-up, you're entitled to something very special. So I'm making you assistant coach. Assistant coach? I said. It might not sound so bad to you, but you have to understand that assistant coach was a position usually given to some younger kid who wasn't even good enough runner to be on the team. He might as well have told me I was a team mascot. 
assistant coach? That's right. Well, what do I get to do? Take attendance, get equipment, stuff like that. Well, what was I supposed to say to that? Austin gets all the glory and power of being team captain, and I get to take attendance. I tried to be enthusiastic, but I just couldn't. And the coach could see it in my eyes. I didn't have a poker face. Thanks, I said. Well, you don't seem too happy about it. No, I'm happy. I'm, I'm just a little upset about being captain, that's all. Yeah, sure, I understand. Well, I mean, you can hang around here for a few minutes if you like. I'll give you a late pass for homeroom. Nah, that's okay. I'm sure you could tell by my voice that it wasn't okay. I didn't have a poker voice, either. Listen, you know, there's, there's always high school. Right, I said, silently thinking how lost in space would win again when we were seniors in high school. Uh, thanks. It was the least I could do. You're a good kid, Jared. I feel bad for you. No, I mean, don't feel bad for me. You don't, I don't want you feeling bad for me. Well, I mean, I think sometimes life gives people the short end of the stick, you know? And I think you deserve more. Thanks. See this afternoon? Yeah. Be early, so, ha, uh, you can take attendance. <laughs> we lucky him. The hall was empty when I left the gym, except for one kid. None other than Lost in Space himself was standing outside the gym doors. He was waiting for me. It wasn't a coincidence. Oh, man. You spoke to the coach already, huh? Yeah. So, he told you I won? How'd you already know? Ah, he spoke to me first. Oh, come on. You didn't think he'd tell you before he told me, do you? Austin waited for an answer, but I didn't give him one. Ah, I'll bet you'll like being team secretary. Assistant coach. Pah! All it really is is team secretary. Hey, I'll make sure to give you lots of memos to type. Maybe you can come over to my house sometime and answer some phones. <laughs> I turned and walked down the hall. He followed, his arrow pads gliding across the floor. I wanted to step on him and leave nice great tread marks on the snow white leather shoe toes. It's not secretary. All right, go for then. I stopped. What? Ah, uh, you know, go for. Hey, Jared, go for this. Hey, Jared, go for that. Hey, Jared, go for, go for, go for. Uh, on movie sets, that's an actual job you can have. It's called go for, because it's when you work with the director and you go for things for him, like go for coffee or go for a new film because we're running out. And you're called a gopher because you go for things. But here he's calling him a gopher. Gopher. I just scowled at him. He saw the anger in my unpoker face and laughed. <laughs> ah, just kidding, he said in the nastiest, most obnoxious tone a person could come up with. Then he laughed harder and turned away, his arrow pads bouncing off down the hallway, squeaking on the floor. I felt more humiliated than I felt in a long time as I walked down the hall. It wasn't the fact that I was assistant coach that bothered me. It was the fact that Austin knew first, and as usual, made fun of me calling me Gopher. It was bad enough to feel hidden in his shadow, but to be humiliated? That was something else. He was twisting the knife. How would I feel if Austin Pace had never been born? Hmm, let's not talk about it. The alarm went off at 1.30. That's right, you guessed it, another school fire. I can't say I wasn't glad to hear the alarm bell, I hadn't been able to concentrate all day because of what had happened that morning. At least now I could feel angry without having to pay attention to the teacher at the same time. It used to be nobody raised much of a fuss when the fire alarm went off. The teachers would just get the class up and funnel them in an orderly manner down the stairway and out into the field. Now it was much quicker and much more serious. It used to be they were all drills or false alarms, but last year there were three real fires. The last one burned down the gym. Now, as we marched into the hall, I could swear I already smelled smoke. The scene out in the field was much more chaotic than any of the teachers could stand for. Kids were running in the field, and the neat little rows of classes were breaking down into mobs of kids, a good many of them pressing up against the fence to see the smoke pouring out of the cafeteria. It wasn't a whole lot of smoke, but it was enough to cause a commotion. I didn't really care to watch the fire. 
I have my own problems to think about. If I sound heartless, it isn't because I didn't care about anyone left in the school. I'd already overheard the principals say the school had been cleared and there was nothing to worry about except the cafeteria burning down, which, believe me, is exactly what the cafeteria deserved. While the cafeteria smoked, I fumed, still filled with the anger Austin had put in me that morning. I don't want to talk about it, I told Cheryl when she asked me about the track team. She knew exactly what I meant when I added, and don't ask again. Well, join the club. Why? What's wrong with you? Oh, nothing. It's just that the play they're doing this year is Annie. If you're not familiar, that's Annie with the adorable little floppy-haired kid as the main role. Oh, she, no, did you see the new one? That awesome. So, so, guess what snotty little brat is absolutely perfect for the role? Wait, Rebecca's trying out? No, I don't even think she has to. They're going to just look at her and give her the role. Cheryl continued to complain to me about Rebecca and other things. I turned to look at the school. The firefighters were standing by the fire truck, doing nothing in particular, which meant that the fire was not a big one and had been put out right away. The cafeteria had been saved, although it would probably smell like smoke for the rest of the year. We all knew there would be no more school that day, not that they were positive there was no fire left and the building had a chance to air out. Still, they couldn't let us go home until 3. You're coming back, so... For the... Oh, yeah, the crippled kid. Can you get her the shoe? Thank you much. Still, they couldn't let us go home until 3, and so the schoolyard began to resemble a junior high school riot, with kids playing all sorts of unruly games that made the teachers all start pulling out their hair. A club, said Cheryl. Huh? I asked, not having heard her. I said, we should form a club of all the kids who are second best. I laughed. Yeah, right. And one by one, do away with everyone in our way. Mwah, ha, 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 ha. More foreshadowing, more foreshadowing. No, I'm serious. We could have a club just for fun. Something that only we could have. And none of the unbeatable kids could be in it. Like a second best club. That's a stupid idea. No, it's not. We could all go and do things and have fun and really make the unbeatable kids jealous that we thought of it before they did. We'll be one up on them for a change. Yeah, and who'd be in this club? I don't know. We'd have to think about it for a while and, you know, come up with some names. I'll bet there are lots of kids who want to be in it. My brother, for instance. <laughs> well, nobody else wants to do it. They're laughing at us. But if they don't, Jared... They could be, sorry, we could be starting something big. A secret club that'll go on for years after we've gone on to high school. I thought about this. Cheryl always had a way of convincing me of things, but this time, she wasn't the one who convinced me. It was someone else. Hey, Jared, someone called. It was that familiar voice. A voice I didn't want to hear. I could almost see those arrow pads and that red hair and those long, bony arms. Hey, Jared, you want a race? First race of the season. So this was it, the challenge. Austin was always the one to challenge first. Usually, he waited until the second week when he'd seen me run and was absolutely sure he'd be able to beat me. This time, he asked on the second day, and there were too many kids around for me to turn down the challenge. Come on. Don't you think it'd be better if we waited till the field was clear? Hey, isn't this clear enough? I turned around. Sure enough, the field was clear enough to race. Austin came over with about ten kids, and more kids were joining us. And there we'll stop. Um, I'm going to make a change. I'm pushing the quiz back to Monday. Um, the reason being... Uh, I'm evil, but even I'm not evil enough to make you try and read 30 pages in the night. Uh, so what we're going to do is we'll have the quiz Monday, and then tomorrow I'm going to read a few pages more because there's a part I want to get to, um, and then I'm going to let you guys read on your own tomorrow. If you don't want to read Shadow Club tomorrow, then you're welcome to work on your book report. But I'm going to give you the choice of one or the other. I'll send out for mine to parents so that they know, but yeah, we'll be till. <laughs>